Hello again from DNN Custom Creations. I've had a number of people ask me on my Langmire Crossbrot Pro uh, how I installed the uh, drag chains on my um, system. I gotta admit right up front, and as I said it in another video, uh, much of the credit goes to the people on the Langmire uh, forum. Uh, I used a whole bunch of information from those guys that had also installed drag chains I made a little bit of differences and I think it worked out pretty well, but I wouldn't have gotten anywhere close without uh, the assistance of uh, seeing what some of the other people have done. So all credit goes to them. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is walk you through, I've already got these installed, but I'm gonna walk you through the process and I think it'll be sufficient information to allow you to uh, do it yourself if you want to. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through some of the steps. Okay, let's talk about the material that was made, the used to make the channels uh, for the drag chains. And uh, it's square aluminum tubing. I had recently built a six place kayak trailer and had a little bit of material left over. And so what you need is uh, five feet of this uh, aluminum tubing that is uh, it's five feet, about 152 centimeters for you folks in the rest of the world. And this is a two inch by two inch by one eighth wall, or again for uh, everybody else, 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters by 3.175 millimeters. Not sure if you guys mix units, if not, then just move that decimal and it'd be 0.3175 centimeters. Anyway, here's the, uh, looking at it from the end that's basically what it looks like and uh, I will split this tubing full length in half now in my particular case I used a bandsaw so I set up a, a just a simple fence with some two by fours and I ran through that that through the bandsaw and split this in half now the nice thing about the bandsaw is uh, it um, has a very small kerf so you don't lose a lot of material but uh, you could certainly use a table saw to do that with a carbide blade, uh, would work just great. Or if you really uh, are hard, hard up, you're gonna have to use something like a, a skill saw or a, uh, you know, even a jigsaw, something like that. Once you've got that cut, and here is what that looks like then. Um, here's a little bit of re uh, remainder material. And you can see that there is your channel. Now, I, perhaps you could buy a channel in something close to this size. Uh, I didn't really look because uh, I had some of this uh, material already left over. Uh, but uh, those are the, the uh, channels that I'll be using. I did one other cut. I took a, uh, made a, a sharp cut on a, a piece of that and uh, you can see here the angle, pretty uh, acute angle, and so it wound up the piece that I'll be using two of these for attaching the jet drag chains to two places in the, both the X and the Y. And uh, I cut, there's basically that section out of this. Uh, there the X mark is a, is a portion that's been removed, will be removed, and uh, this is four inches long, or I guess, let's see, 2.5 times four, it's about 10 centimeters long for everybody else. And I'll show you then how those are used on the table. Okay, so uh, the five foot length, one five foot length became the uh, piece that goes on top of the X rail, X axis rail, and spans that entire length. And the way that that's mounted, uh, if you see over here, the, this rail is uh, you know, mounted by two bolts now. On the inside bolt, I went and uh, drilled and tapped that bolt to receive, a, a, in my particular case, a quarter uh, 20 uh, bolt. And um, I guess in, uh, for the folks in, in uh, metric land, I don't know, maybe something like a six by one millimeter pitch, something like that would, would work fine. Now, for me, I've got a lathe, so this was an easy process to do. 
Um, you could probably do that with a drill press and maybe a V-block to hold that uh, bolt steady. Or, you know, you, if you're careful, you could probably even do that with a hand drill. Doesn't have to be accurate. Uh, doesn't even have to be truly a, a straight hole, just as long as you can tap it. So on top of that then, I made myself some aluminum spacers. This is a little more than a half inch long. Uh, a stack of washers would work if uh, you, know, you don't have a way of making spacers like that. And so this goes on top of that. Then the rail goes on top of that. And then of course the, the bolt goes through. Uh, and so what you're left with is a little bit of standoff on that rail above the existing uh, x-axis rail. There's the other side. Again, uh, same thing. There's the head of the bolt, the spacer, and then uh, that's how that's put uh, attached. That is stiff enough now to not uh, give you flex and so that works fine and you need the spacers need to be big enough to provide you a little bit of gap between the z-axis carriage and the top of that or the bottom of the uh, drag chain channel on the y-axis now it's again that same piece of channel but it's cut smaller it's cut down to about 32 inches just enough to span those two legs of the table. And I've had to notch out this so that I could uh, provide access to that bolt. And I just used the existing bolt that already is in, in those two legs and attach that uh, to the channel. Uh, so uh, the other only thing I did is uh, made a hole big enough for a large grommet. That hole has to be big enough to pass two of the ends these these ends right here uh, are you know pretty good size and so that hole has to be big enough to pass two of those through it okay all right now let's talk a little bit about the drag chains themselves uh, first the size of those I'm actually larger than I need to be because as you can see there's only two wires uh, that go through this one that happens to be your uh, initial height sensor wire and the Z-axis motor wire. Those drag chains, I'll get you uh, measurements or, or the sizes, and I also will provide a link uh, down in the description to tell you what I actually used. Uh, on the chain here in this direction, uh, it, there are three wires that go through. Uh, there'll be the um, two wires that come from the initial height sensor and the Z-axis, and then also the X-axis motor wire. And we'll talk a little bit about that because there are some changes I had to make to give me enough room of that wire to make it through that entire path. So the... Um, Make sure that when you buy these, now this particular one is a 15 by 30, 15 millimeter by 30, and make sure you buy these where this can open up, these uh, unsnap and open up so that you can put your wire in. And the reason being is because you have to pass some of these uh, uh, serial uh, nine pin D connectors through that, uh, you can't do that if it's, if it's a chain that won't open up unless you had a real large chain and you don't want to use that anyway. Uh, the chain on the top here is an 18 by 25. And again, it's the chain that, that opens up so that you can put the wire in there and then it just snaps closed. Uh, the other end of those drag chains, you saw the, um, the this one end directs, is attached directly to the channel. Same thing over here on the, on the Y. It's attached directly to the channel. But let's talk about now the other end, that piece that I cut with the angle. And um, I use that to attach. Let's look now up here 
Here is that piece that's been cut. Again, this is four inches long, about 10 centimeters. And in this particular case, I have attached that to the Z axis assembly by drilling and tapping two holes into that uh, motor mount uh, assembly. Uh, again, in my particular case, I think it was a quarter 20 socket head screws. Uh, for everybody else, uh, you know, maybe a six by one, something like that. Whatever's convenient and common uh, for your folks. And then uh, the drag chain is attached just here through that piece and in line so that it flows in the, in the channel, flows through that channel. So it's uh, in line with that. That's, I made two of those brackets, and so the other one was used on the other end. In this particular case, it's just mounted to, the, to this rail. Now, originally, I was going to uh, use some self-tapping screws and go into this rail. I thought, well, why do I need to do that? I'll just use the existing bolt up top, and the angle of this allows you, it gives it good st stability so that it can't rotate left or right and so that's the way that was done and then the drag chain as you can see here just mounted simply to that bracket and it's long enough you mount it so it's long enough so that again your uh, chain can be in line uh, with the channel that the, the chain is going to ride in okay so on the the wires so the the wires that come from your initial height sensor and the z-axis motor were plenty long enough you know because they were made originally to kind of follow the path of where the the torch wire is so go all the way up to the support here then all the way down to the bottom of the support and then back around to the electronics box so those were already pretty they were long enough i didn't do you need to make any modifications to those uh whatsoever now on the Y, if you remember, when on the assembly, the motor on the, the side that's closest to the electronics box has a short cable, and the motor that's uh, the Y motor that's on the other end has a long cable, and that cable is long enough to travel the length of the bottom of the frame and come around and attach. Well, the the motor for the X, that cable is not long enough to follow the path of the drag chain come around through this hole and go down to the electronics box so um, often people will put a extension on that using a you know a d pin serial um, nine pins extension on that but that forces you then to have to put that uh, connection inside of the chain or on the outside of the chain and um, it's just a, a little clumsy so I took the one the, the motor that originally was instructed to use for the X and I swapped that and put it over on the Y the one farthest away and I took the one that's on the Y that has the long cable and put it here on the X and that gave me enough room then to make that path so that leaves the problem with the Y now uh, that cable is not long enough to make it to the electronics box so that is where I use the extension and you can see uh, here there's the connection you see I've tie wrapped it to uh, to keep it from you know being able to come apart and with that six foot long uh, extension now I've got plenty of room to make it to the electronics box. I thought this was a little better because having a connection inside of a moving chain where that connection is constantly moving um, is just, I think it's a, a, a place where you could have some problems. In this particular case, that's not going to move at all. And so that's the way that uh, I chose to uh, run that. So I, again, basically took the, the one they extract you for the X swapped it for the long lead on the Y, then that Y motor in the X place is plenty long enough for the chains. 
and then used an extension on the Y to get to the electronics box. Hope that's clear. Okay. So then the final wiring is the two wires that go along this long rail, uh, initial height sensor and the Z-axis motor. And that, that combines then with the uh, X-axis motor and then that becomes three wires going through this drag chain down through the opening and obviously down to the electronics box. That's the, the wiring and uh, I think these chains really help clean up um, the look and they're very functional and um, I've, the one thing I've questioned is whether or not I'll get some water in that channel uh, so I guess I could probably drill some um, holes to allow the water to drain but so far I haven't seen any issues with that. Okay, hope that helps. Thanks.